The night sky, the dark blanket above our heads adorned with shining stars extending as far as the eye can see. One of the most appealing and mystifying of all sights. The beauty and the majesty of the universe have inspired awe and reverence in the best brains throughout history. There is a perfect brain behind all the natural physical laws. This most beautiful system of the sun, planets and comets could only proceed from the counsel and dominion of a powerful and intelligent being. Please describe the symptoms of this manifest world. What is its background? How is it created? How is it conserved? And under whose control is all this being done? Many millennia ago, an advanced civilization revealed the mystery of the origin and nature of the cosmos. The term Vedic refers to the civilization of ancient India. Angkor Wat, the world's largest temple complex, with walls nearly one half mile on each side, was built between 1112 and 1150 AD in Cambodia. Astronomy and Vedic cosmology are inseparably entwined at Angkor Wat. The central towers represent Mount Meru, the cosmic axial mountain. The five internested rectangular outer walls and moats indicate chains of mountains enclosing the world and the cosmic oceans beyond. Science Journal noted that Angkor Wat had encoded precise calendrical, historical and cosmological themes into the architectural plan for the temple. As many as 18 astronomical alignments have been identified within its walls. Rarely in history has any culture given rise to a structure that so elaborately and expansively incorporates its concept of the cosmos. Similar integration of cosmology and architecture is seen in the massive Indonesian temple at Borobudur. The temple was laid out using the ancient method of Vastu Purusha Mandala. This square diagram harmonizes architecture with the annual movements of the celestial realm. The temple was constructed sometime around 775 A.D. His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, also known as Srila Prabhupada, author of 84 books on Vedic knowledge and founder of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness and the Bhaktivedanta Institute. He desired to erect the world's largest planetarium depicting Vedic cosmology through modern technology. He hoped that this gigantic virtual 3D animated model would give the contemporary world access to the Vedic cosmos. Templar Vedic Planetarium, that's we shall show the Vedic conception of planetary system within this material world and above the material world. Vishvanandana Swami, a prominent scholar of Vedic cosmology in the line of Sripad Madhvacharya, feels that the planetarium will expand the horizons of modern cosmological knowledge. We have a lot of information about this universe in our Vedic and Puranic scriptures. So certainly a person who is interested in exploration, he would be, he would get some material for exploration. The planetarium had many different exhibits and we wanted some exhibits that would show, that would create this doubt in, the, in science that they don't have the proper explanation and that the Bhagavatam has a better explanation. In the temple, 
mm. and that you know it would show the Vedic cosmology. Mm. And I think later on he said that even if the scientists don't accept it, we don't care. You know, we just show what's in the bag of ten. We don't care whether people accept it or not, but we should just show it. In a letter to Bhakti Swarup Damodar Swami. Srila Prabhupada delineated four phenomena to be explained in the planetarium. It explained the passing seasons, mm. the eclipses and the phases of the moon, and the passing of day and night, etc. Then it will be a very powerful propaganda. The literature of that period contains a wealth of cosmological knowledge encoded in Sanskrit, arguably the world's oldest language. This knowledge has the potential to enrich our understanding of the cosmos we live in. A fundamental principle of Vedic cosmology is the existence of a dual reality, material and non-material. Here we see the non-material sky filled with innumerable planets of permanent stature. Among these, the topmost planet, Goloka, is shaped like a lotus flower and it is here that the super intelligent designer of the cosmos, Sri Krishna, resides with his associates. Although knowledge of the non-material realm remains beyond ordinary perception, the Vedic knowledge of the material cosmos has been recognized as extraordinary by many eminent Western thinkers. As in Hindu mythology, it is a continual dance of creation and destruction involving the whole cosmos, the basis of all existence and of all natural phenomena. Long before it became a scientific aspiration to estimate the age of the earth, many elaborate systems of the world chronology had been devised by the sages of antiquity. The most remarkable of these occult timescales is that of the ancient Hindus. Indian cosmologists, the first to estimate the age of the earth at more than four billion years, they came closest to the modern ideas of atomism, quantum physics. To the philosophers of India, however, relativity is no new discovery. Just as the concept of light years is no matter for astonishment to people used to thinking of time in millions of kalpas. A kalpa is about 4,320,000 years. The Hindu religion is the only one of the world's great faiths dedicated to the idea that the cosmos itself undergoes an immense, indeed an infinite, number of deaths and rebirths. Thus the Vedic literatures answer the question whether the cosmos always existed or it had a beginning. The temporal arena of repeated universal creations and destructions exists in a corner of the non-material sky. material nature, which is one of my energies, is working under my direction, O son of Kunti, producing all moving and non-moving beings. Under its rule, this manifestation is created and annihilated again and again. The only religion in which the time scales correspond, no doubt by accident, to those of modern scientific cosmology. Its cycles run from our ordinary day and night to a day and night of Brahma. 8.64 billion years long, longer than the age of the Earth or the Sun, and about half the time since the Big Bang. And there are much longer time scales still. <laughs> 